Hi guys, welcome back. This is a video just about the questions that can come up at the 50 mark questions section B in paper one. And this one is just about rocks and weathering. I have other videos about the other topics there. Please just make a note that this is for the Cambridge International Exam, course code 9696, and just for AS Geography. So these questions are taken from the last four years, winter and summer series, and you can see there that this comes up quite a lot about plate tectonics. First one there to assess the extent to which subduction is involved in the formation of tectonic landforms. So this does require a good knowledge of all tectonic landforms. Some do involve subduction on like the destructive plate boundaries, but obviously there's other ones, the conservative and the constructive or the divergent and the transform plate boundaries. You can also talk about collision plate boundaries and full mountains, for example. So that would be a good one where full mountains is in the destructive uh, plate boundary, but not necessarily um, seen everywhere, but also is found in the collision where something else is happening. So it's a nice mix there. Uh, for a question like that, I would think to maybe split it up into the different plate boundaries maybe and have a discussion on subduction's role in each perhaps. Um, or you could start off with just talking about subduction uh, in very general form. The next question is essentially almost the exact same. Um, you can talk about the different plate boundaries, what's found there, some processes that they share um, can come up there as well. So in that sense, I think you've actually got a very open question with the second one there. Should be very, very easy. So if you start with something like this, if you're practicing, it gives you at least something to aim for, practice your writing, and then you might find that you can actually plan an essay like this very easily. Convection currents are the most significant factor in the formation of a landform at a divergent plate boundary. So divergent plate boundary or constructive plate boundary there. And it's going in with convection currents this time and not subduction. So you see, if you talked about uh, tectonic plate and formation of landforms here, convection currents would have already come up as a very specific point you would have mentioned in each one. So if you guys want any help with this, remember we've got a course down below that offers loads of sample answers and actually teaches you how it's marked and how to get very high marks in all of these. Now the mass movement section has very distinctive areas. So we just talked about te plate tectonics. This is mass movement. So this one here is about reducing mass movement uh, with the aid of examples, plural there, uh, evaluate attempts to reduce mass movement. So you can talk about maybe hard soft engineering, those type of things, uh, and the differences in them. You could also talk about one case study, how they use a method of lots of different aspects to reduce mass movement and see it compared to another one. Mass movement can never effectively uh, be effectively reduced. That's the exact same as this one here. So if you answer the first one, you can answer the next one. Attempts to reduce mass movement are not always successful. Again, it's the same question. And assess the extent to which mass movement can be reduced. Same again there. And uh, yeah, looking at the reduction of mass movement again. In all of these, you should have, uh, well, this one here, it says all of them with examples, but you should definitely have one key case study. Hong Kong is a really popular one. They have like lots of things published about uh, mass movement there, for example. So you should have one, but it's good to have a second one for a comparative. Sticking with the mass movement section, the next one is looking at the, uh, the causes of it. Mass movement is mainly the result of human activity and water is the most important uh, factor influencing mass movement on slopes. So you see in the first one, you could have a paragraph about how human activity is the most important, and then you could have how uh, levels of precipitation um, and levels of waters in different stores may influence it. And then you might have a third factor that you might discuss as well. Um, or throughout it, you might just talk about different mass movements and how humans are involved, water is involved, and those types of things. So that's another way you could divide up um, this question here. So there you have it with mass movement, you've got the causes and then you've also got the attempts to reduce. Moving on to the third distinctive section is the uh, weathering in the, the rate and the type. So this is pretty useful here uh, just to have a couple of examples. You'll see it's almost identical in each case. It's that water is the most important factor affecting the type and rate of weathering or its temperature or its rock type. So they all are very, very important. And if you are planning out a question, you could actually have those three as your main paragraphs. You could have water, temperature, uh, rock type as well. Instead of temperature, you might go something with climate though as well. So climate would maybe integrate temperature and precipitation into kind of one term. Um, whereas just water being the most effective, you might talk about a mix of things, including precipitation, but also just like water levels, discharge levels, those types of things, uh, moisture, evaporation rate, and all of that could be considered. So these are a little bit harder because these are purely physical. So here it's like with the aid of examples. 
So I encourage students when they're learning, just have a, of examples of say like a very temperate climate or a very tropical climate. So they can just make reference to that. The types of weathering that are happening there most commonly. And then if you have things, if you look at like the Peltier diagram, you can then bring that up and you can use very specifics on temperature and precipitation from that. Um, now remember like in the 15 markers, you're expected to have name examples, no matter if it's physical or human, but also if you've got theory to go with it, like Peltier's diagram, that's absolutely perfect and going to really help you out there. There you have it. That's the four main questions that might come up as 15 mark questions uh, in the AS exam for paper one on just rocks and weathering. There's other choices out there. Hydrology, fluvial geomorphology, atmosphere and weather. I've got those in other videos. And if you look below, you'll find information regarding the AS course that we now have and other resources that might be available and whatever's been published up until then. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you do like if you enjoyed this and if you want to comment below and let me know some of the difficult things you're working with and things I might be able to help you with here through videos. That would be great. Thanks very much.